Welcome back to the second part of our series on cellular respiration. In my previous video, I covered glycolysis, and today, we'll dive into the Krebs cycle. In this video, you'll learn what the Krebs cycle is, who identified its stages, and get a detailed explanation of each stage. Towards the end of the video, I will also explain why the Krebs cycle is important. Let's get started. The Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle, is named after Hans Krebs, who identified its steps in the 1930s. Hans Krebs first identified the cycle in 1937, earning the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1953. It is a series of chemical reactions used by all aerobic organisms to generate energy through the oxidation of acetyl-CoA derived from carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. This cycle is a crucial part of cellular respiration that takes place in the mitochondria, where enzymes facilitating the reactions are located. It involves the oxidation of acetyl-CoA to carbon dioxide and water, producing energy in the form of ATP and electron carriers NADH and FADH2, which enter the electron transport chain. The Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix of the mitochondria in eukaryotic cells and in the cytoplasm in prokaryotes, playing a key role in the cell's energy production and metabolic processes. Before proceeding to the steps of the Krebs cycle, let's see what is required for the process. Acetyl-CoA, derived from the metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, is essential. We also need NAD and FAD, which are electron carriers that get reduced to NADH and FADH2. Additionally, ADP and inorganic phosphate are needed for ATP synthesis. Finally, water is used in various reactions throughout the cycle. So to recap, to curb cycle, acetyl-CoA, electrons carriers, ADP, inorganic phosphate, and water are needed. Besides all of these, we need a cellular environment which is obviously the mitochondrial matrix. Let's discuss the steps of the Krebs cycle. To start the process, we require acetyl-CoA. As I mentioned, the Krebs cycle is the second step of cellular respiration, so technically, the end product of the first step should enter into the second step. The end product of the first step is pyruvate. How is this pyruvate produced from a glucose molecule? I have explained this in detail in my previous video. You can watch that video by clicking on the i button, and the link is also in the description. Now, getting back to the topic, the process starts with acetyl-CoA. This means pyruvate has undergone some transformation. This reaction is called pyruvate decarboxylation. So, the first step is the conversion of pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. Pyruvate decarboxylation is a crucial biochemical reaction that connects glycolysis and the Krebs cycle in cellular respiration. This process converts pyruvate, the end product of glycolysis, into acetyl-CoA, which then enters the Krebs cycle. This reaction is catalyzed by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, a large multi-enzyme complex made up of these three enzymes. Several cofactors and coenzymes are required for the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex to function properly. During this process, pyruvate loses one carbon as carbon dioxide, CO2. The remaining two-carbon acetyl group is then transferred to coenzyme A, CoA, to form acetyl-CoA. This reaction is catalyzed by the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and also produces NADH from NAD. The overall reaction can be summarized as follows, pyruvate plus CoA plus NAD plus yields acetyl-CoA, carbon dioxide, NADH, and a hydrogen ion. Now that acetyl-CoA is ready, it enters the Krebs cycle. In the first step of the Krebs cycle, acetyl-CoA combines with a 4-carbon molecule called oxaloacetate to form a 6-carbon molecule called citrate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme citrate synthase. During this step, the acetyl group from acetyl-CoA is transferred to oxaloacetate, completing the formation of citrate. This marks the beginning of the series of reactions that will lead to the production of energy and electron carriers in the Krebs cycle. In the second step of the Krebs cycle, 
citrate undergoes a rearrangement to form isocitrate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme aconitase. Citrate is first converted to an intermediate called cis-aconitate through the removal of a water molecule. Then, water is added back to this intermediate to form isocitrate. This step is crucial as it prepares the molecule for the subsequent oxidative decarboxylation. In the third step of the Krebs cycle, isocitrate is oxidized and decarboxylated to form alpha-ketoglutarate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase. During this step, isocitrate is oxidized, which converts NAD plus to NADH. The process also releases a molecule of carbon dioxide, resulting in the formation of alpha-ketoglutarate. This step is important as it generates NADH, which will be used in the electron transport chain to produce ATP. In the fourth step of the Krebs cycle, alpha-ketoglutarate is further oxidized and decarboxylated to form succinyl-CoA. This reaction is catalyzed by the alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. During this step, another molecule of carbon dioxide is released, and NAD plus is reduced to NADH. Additionally, coenzyme A is added to the remaining 4-carbon molecule to form succinyl-CoA. This step is significant because it generates another NADH molecule and prepares the substrate for subsequent reactions in the cycle. In the fifth step of the Krebs cycle, succinyl-CoA is converted into succinate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme succinyl-CoA synthetase. During this step, the CoA group is released from succinyl-CoA, and this release provides the energy needed to synthesize a molecule of guanosine triphosphate from guanosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate. In some cells, GTP is then used to produce ATP. This step is significant because it directly produces a molecule of GTP or ATP, which is used as an energy source by the cell. In the sixth step of the Krebs cycle, succinate is oxidized to fumarate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase. During this process, two hydrogen atoms are removed from succinate and transferred to the electron carrier flavin adenine denucleotide, reducing it to FADH2. This step is unique because succinate dehydrogenase is embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane and also participates in the electron transport chain. The production of FADH2 is important as it will be used in the electron transport chain to generate ATP. In the seventh step of the Krebs cycle, fumarate is hydrated to form malate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme fumarase. During this process, a water molecule is added to fumarate, converting it into malate. This step is essential as it prepares the substrate for the final oxidation reaction in the Krebs cycle. In the eighth and final step of the Krebs cycle, malate is oxidized to regenerate oxaloacetate. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme malate dehydrogenase. During this process, malate is oxidized. NAD plus is reduced to NADH. The regeneration of oxaloacetate is crucial as it allows the Krebs cycle to continue by providing the starting molecule that combines with acetyl-CoA in the first step. This step also produces another NADH molecule, which will be used in the electron transport chain to generate ATP. The Krebs cycle is crucial for cellular energy production, generating ATP, NADH, and FADH2. It provides intermediates for biosynthetic pathways and integrates carbohydrate, fat, and protein metabolism. Additionally, it regulates metabolic processes and maintains cellular homeostasis by producing carbon dioxide and recycling metabolic intermediates. Electron carriers NADH and FADH2 are the entered into electron transport chain for energy production. How energy is produced through these carriers, I will discuss in the next video. If you find this video helpful and learn something new, please consider subscribing to BioScholar and sharing my videos with your friends. Thanks for watching.